I had my first panic attack when I was 17 years old. My body went into fight or flight mode. All jokes on me, because I was actually on an airplane flight when it happened. Was it claustrophobia? Was it bad wiring? Was it subconscious trauma? I had so many questions, but one stood above them all. During that flight, my mom gave me my first 10 milligram Valium, and it made me feel like I was flying. And thus began my journey to try and fix the feelings I didn't understand. Some people struggle with their mental health. And out of us, only one in five take medication to help balance out the chemicals in our brains. When you're not feeling physically well, you go to a doctor. So if your brain isn't feeling well, you go to a doctor, right? Wrong. Only roughly one third of people with a mental illness seek any form of treatment. But I desperately wanted to figure this out because I sure as hell didn't like the way I felt and I didn't care who knew it. Well, maybe I cared a little. I was afraid of telling my friends that sometimes I felt like I was dying, physically and emotionally. Physically, I was treating my body. I was on 10, then 20 milligrams of Lexapro and SSRI and 0.5 milligrams of Xanax, a magical little pill to treat anxiety and depression. I started going to therapy. I had good days and bad days and really bad days. My anxiety attacks became persistent and so I was prescribed a higher dose of that magical pill Xanax. Yet, I was still feeling depressed. We tried something different. I was switched off Lexapro and Xanax and onto Mirtazapine and Ativan. I took mirtazapine at night, and if I didn't go to bed within 20 minutes of taking it, I would eat everything in my sight. I learned good medication can have bad side effects. When I gained a bunch of weight, my therapist weaned me off mirtazapine and put me on another fun little pill called Lamictal. Lamictal is a series of anti-seizure pills also used to treat the mood swings of bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder. Getting a definitive diagnosis meant that there had to be a cure, right? Hope. What a misleading drug in itself. When my moods fluctuated out of control, I'd take my safety medication, Ativan. And another, and another. And what are these, sugar pills? I thought getting a diagnosis was going to come with a fix, but I didn't feel fixed. I tried to fix everything externally to fix an internal problem. I switched jobs, therapists, colleges, took more Ativan. My new psychiatrist added Welbutrin to my cocktail, and Jesus, this was getting expensive. What is the price of happiness? My insurance wouldn't cover the cost of Lamictal, so I switched to Trazodone, and Welbutrin wasn't giving me energy and focus the way the doctor said it was supposed to, so he weaned me off the Welbutrin. Adult ADHD, which apparently is a thing, was added as a diagnosis, and I was given different types of ADHD medications to my assembly line to try. Therapy seemed to be working. I read articles about celebrities who were talking openly about their anxiety and depression. I had good days and bad days and less really bad days. I was buying self-help books and researching breathing techniques. I was eating healthy, losing weight, sleeping well, and faking it when I had to. And then, life happened. It smacked me in the face and right off my tracks because a guy I loved broke up with me. The threat of unpredictability is the scariest part when something depressing happens to someone with depression. I had developed an addiction to my safety net, my Ativan medication, and I had to take another pill called Suboxone, along with an intensive outpatient rehab program to get over it. But I didn't give up. I couldn't. There are no rights and wrongs when it comes to feeling and mood. They just exist, we just feel. It's the choices we make on how to constructively deal with those feelings that define us. Once I wasn't afraid to talk about it, I started meeting people who felt the same way I did. I started seeing new doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, and therapists who were covered by my insurance, and I started cognitive behavioral therapy. In seven years' time, seven psychiatrists, four psychologists, countless therapists, two misdiagnoses, over 20 medications, I was finally figuring my mental illness out. Today, I take three pills. What they are doesn't matter because I've learned that that very well could change someday. Finding the medication that works is a journey, and everyone's journey is going to be different. Our chemicals are different. We are different. I cannot hold myself accountable for what happens with my depression and anxiety. That I don't have control over. But I can hold myself accountable for the strength of trying. <laughs>